fellow woodworkers and makers of great things. Welcome to my shop. Two weeks ago, I took a quick look at the new Oliver planer and promised you I'd get back to you with a little more in-depth information about this tool. So today, we'll, we'll get it set up, uh, we'll plane some stock, we'll give you a look at the inside at the, uh, at the uh, Shearix uh, cutter head, uh, we'll set up the digital uh, gauge, uh, see how that works, uh, see what it's all cut, cut out to be, and then we'll actually take some cuts and we'll look at the cut quality, uh, we'll do my best to measure and display the snipe, uh, if any, that comes off it, and maybe even compare it to my old Delta planer, which I still have, and see if there is any noticeable difference uh, in snipe. So let's get to it, and let's get a look uh, a little closer at this Oliver uh, planer. The number one benefit of this uh, tool, obviously, is the Shelix cutter head. So let's take a look at that. I've already taken the three thumb screws uh, that hold this duct on, so it will come right off over here. We'll use our supplied T30. We'll take this cover off the back, and we can hopefully get a look at the Shelix uh, underneath. And there you can see the, the, the Shelix cutter head, uh, which is, um, again, the, the, the number one uh, feature, I believe, of this, of this tool uh, with those individual um, blades, carbide, uh, but most importantly, set in the helixal, helixical uh, format, right? So, uh, one blade at a time is coming off and making a slicing cut on the wood as opposed to the face of the cutter head right here impacting the wood straight on. These are coming in a slicing motion uh, just like uh, very similar to if you're hand planing a board uh, the ability to skew the plane uh, to create that, that, that better slicing action. Um, other planers on the market uh, have what they're calling helixical heads uh, or, 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 or something like that, but what they really are are a series of straight across segmented cutters that are all engaging the wood uh, flat on um, as opposed to in the slicing motion. So, um, you know, major, major difference there in my book um, that, I, that I think is, uh, is, is pretty obvious. Here's an example of a straight-on segmented cutter head. This is the Laguna offering. Uh, it does offer four-sided carbide uh, blades, uh, but as you can see, they're, they're in a straight row and they strike the wood um, directly, not in a, on a shearing cut. Then this is the Rikon uh, version, and, and again, it is a, a straight-line segmented uh, cutter head. Um, it is not helix. And uh, the cutters are two-sided, not four-sided, and high-speed steel, not carbide. This is the uh, the jet cutter head, and, and again, uh, you know, segmented, straight-line cutter. They're a little wider than all the others, uh, but they are two-sided. They are high-speed steel, not carbide, and they do strike uh, straight on, not with a shearing cut. Now, all of these are fine planers, and, and I'm sure they're going to do a fine job. But, you know, it's just, you know, be aware of uh, what you're buying. Um, is, it, is it a helix or is it a straight-on segmented cutter? Do your research. Understand what you're getting. It's all about uh, the value on these things. So, checking the instructions uh, to set up the digital uh, readout meter. Uh, it asks you to uh, plane a board flat. Well, let's do that. We're taking a piece of approximately half inch stock. It is nine and a quarter inches wide. And we'll run that through the planer and see what she does. I've got the planer set up to take a 1 32nd pass. And if I start the board a little bit, I could see from this scale 
that I'm at one thirty second uh, of an inch going to be removed. I put a little crosshatch pattern on the board so we can see how she does. And uh, let me turn the dust collector on. Okay, let's give that another try. This time I've got the dust board open. We'll see how the dust collection is. Okay, obviously I had forgotten to lower the planer another 30 seconds to make the cut, so the first time I put it through it didn't touch. Um, but here's the second pad, beautiful surface, um, wonderful. What, what the next step is for uh, setting up this meter is to get an exact thickness of this board now, and in doing so we'll be able to set the meter. So let me get that set up. Okay, with, with a board surfaced uh, and flat through the planer, the next step in the calibration process is to measure the exact thickness of this stock. We're going to use that to set the, the meter. Let's see if I can get us here at the midpoint of the board. So I've got 0.4325. Write that down. 0.4325. This would be a great time to check how level the planer is cutting across its width, or at least the nine and a quarter inches I have in here. We have 4325 on one side, and on this side we've got 4320. All right, so what is that? Uh, tenths, hundred, thousand. That's a half of a thousandth uh, difference uh, across nine and a half inches. I don't think we can dial it in much closer than that, so we'll just leave this uh, planer set uh, where it is. Um, very nice surface, uh, even since we went through a couple of knots here. Um, pretty happy with it. And I'm sure there's snipe there, I don't feel much, but we'll do a snipe test a little later and see how much that locking head helps us. All right, so now we know we got 0.4325 to work with. Let's take that over to the digital meter and set it up. Okay, let's give this a shot. I um, have the lights off. <laughs> it's, it's nearly impossible for you guys to see this meter uh, when I turn it on because there's a backlight that I can't uh, get rid of, so we, we're, we're a little bit in the dark now. Okay. Turn the DRO switch to the ABS mode. That's the absolute mode right there. Okay. Hold the on-off calibration button for three to five seconds till ABS is blinking. I don't know if I got into ABS mode or not. I did not. ABS. ABS. Hold for three to five seconds. ABS light is blinking. Reset to zero, and we want to hit the plus button to get to our 0.4325.
0.43, we'll call it 0.435. Press this. And the value is now set in uh, the digital meter. So uh, what we've just done was we've set the, the cutter head so that in the absolute mode it is 0.435 uh, inches uh, above the, uh, the bed. So we'll, we'll result in a 0.435 piece of stock if we use that setting. Um, there is also an incremental mode. All right, it's at zero now because I haven't moved the cutter head. But if I were to move the cutter head now, and I've got too much uh, wiring and cameras over there, but if I was to move the cutter head right now, you would see this change to the increment I'll be moving. So if I wanted to take a 32nd, a 64th, or whatever, um, it will tell me what the increment is. Again, absolute cut at that, sec at that setting would be 0.435. Then I could go to incremental and measure uh, the change I make if I reset the planer. Hope that made some sense. Let's do the next step. Uh, this board, it's a piece of pine. It is a 30 second short of one inch. So what I'm going to do is take a pass off it on the planer. Then we're going to set this digital meter to 7 eighths of an inch. And we'll see how close it could come uh, to hitting that seven of eight, seven eighths of an inch. Like I said, I've got about three thirty seconds to go, so I'll take a little off on the first pass before I set it to sec seven eighths of an inch. <laughs> Okay guys, I think you can see the Wixi meter was set for seven eighths of an inch. It does decimal places until you hit an even 30 second, then we'll give you the actual inch calibration. And you can see on the right there, seven eighths of an inch. Let's go over and measure the time. some light on that. And we are precisely at seven eighths of an inch. So good job, digital readout meter. So here's the process I use to store my benchtop planer, uh, to put it into service, and to put it away. I have a cabinet here under this uh, bench here. There's my old Delta planer. It rolls out like so. And I can simply grab it, bring it over to the table saw here. put it in place, and I'm in business and ready to go. I hook up the dust collection around the side to the outlet I have there, and I'm ready to start planing. Um, that's important to me, probably, not, or maybe not to you. It's important to me because um, it took the DeWalt planer out of the consideration for me. Um, the DeWalt planer has a much bigger footprint. The DeWalt player. Planer weighs about 95 pounds. 
Um, you know, not impossible to move around, but I don't know if I want to do that with a 95 pound planer all the time. The Oliver is about 30 pounds later than that at, at just 63, 65, something like that. And I'm, I'm estimating these weights, I don't know exactly. Maybe a pound or two off. So with the larger footprint making it unable to get into my storage uh, and the extra heavy weight, I took the DeWalt out of consideration uh, and that kind of helped me make the decision to go with the Oliver. But, uh, but that's my process. Now the Oliver planer is considerably taller than my old Delta planer that I was using, but um, I can simply remove the shelf from my uh, existing cabinet there and have more than enough height to bring the Oliver into the house that the Delta used to live in. So, so that wasn't a problem. Uh, the Oliver is going to fit. Let's talk about the snipe. There was very little. Um, what I did was I took two boards, planed one a 32nd of an inch with the cutter head unlocked, and planed another a 32nd of an inch with the cutter head locked. What I'm trying to do here is give a visible representation of the snipe by shading. You can see a little white line, more of a burnish than a real indentation. And then by taking a light sanding over that and removing pencil line, you can see where pencil line remains that that wood is still below the surface. And that is the extent of uh, any, any snipe. And uh, obviously I, I didn't sand very long uh, on that. Now I'm taking the other board doing the same thing. Again, you can see a little line there, a, a little burnish line where you know, the cutter head jumped. Uh, it jumps a little bit when the wood comes off of one roller and still is on the other roller. Um, but again, I'm taking that down uh, lately and you can see on this board, there's a little more snipe. It takes a little bit longer to get across that line. And then I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I don't wanna erase the snipe. I want some visual, visual representation of what it looks like. So that was the two boards. Uh, each uh, went through at the same setting. One, the cutter head was locked. One, the cutter head was not locked. And here's your end result of uh, any snipe. Uh, very, very, very negligible. Um, so let's, uh, I wonder if you can guess which cutter head was locked and which wasn't. And there you have it. That is the minimal snipe that came off this planer. Um, you know, uh, quite honestly, I'm pretty pleased with that. I can, I can live with that. Well, final conclusion, it's a yes. I'm very happy with my purchase. I'm extremely happy with the planer. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, look, I just ran it through the tests. I ran it through, gave it the try. I gave it. Uh, you guys are there live as I was doing it. Um, and I'm very pleased with the results, but let's be honest, you, you can buy a, a, a benchtop planer for around $300 too, all right? It's going to be a lot like my Delta was. It's going to be fine. You're going to be able to do a lot of the things you want to do. Um, but when you step up to, let's say, uh, $700 and above, and now you're getting into some of the, the, the better planers out there, you got to think about what you're getting for those extra dollars. And the reason I think that this particular Oliver planer uh, makes it worth the extra money, two major things. The Shelix cutter head, and I'll tell you why in a couple, and the digital readout. Um, those two options, those two advantages, those two features are serious and meaningful features. You know, I, I haven't looked, but uh, recently I, I believe a Shelex cutter head alone as an upgrade for uh, a planer alone is in the $300 to $400 range, right? So we can put some value on that, uh, on that cutter head. Um, and then you've got the, the, you know, the digital read on top of that. So getting this planer uh, to a value point at about $1,000, I think is there. I think it really is, if those things matter to you. Um, if they don't, then obviously there's no value for you personally. But I think when you get to that Shulex cutter head and you talk, first of all, about the quality of the surface, it's outstanding. 
He's outstanding. Um, I didn't give him any tough tests with any curly maple today or anything like that or any bird's eye. Um, when, when I do, I'll, I'll see how much I still love it. But we ran some, some uh, pine through it today uh, and, and a lot of it was knotty. And normally when you're planing uh, pine with, with knots and, uh, or even reversing grain uh, with a straight knife planer, you're going to get tear out. We didn't see that today with the Sheila cutter head. Right, so let's, let's give it to the Shelex as, as doing what it's uh, advertised to do. Um, the other thing about it though, is look at the ease of change, right? Those cutters are so accessible, so indexable, you can't put them in wrong. You simply loosen a torque screw, rotate it, you know, one notch and put it back in, it indexes itself in place. So those carbide cutter heads um, you know, and with the, with the four sides per blade, um, makes keeping your planer sharp and doing blade changes a snap. Uh, if you've ever done it on the three blade planers, eh, it ain't that fun. It ain't that fun. You get a nick, you're kind of done. Maybe you got a little room to shift one of the blades to erase the nick, but that's only good till the next nick comes. Um, so let's, 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 let's give that for the, for the Shielex head. With regard to the depth of cut options on this machine, it's over the top. First of all, you got the stop along the side of the, the planer where you can say, bring it down to three quarters and no more, and the cutter head will not lower below three quarters or one half or one quarter, wherever you say it. So you've got that. Then you've got the digital, which I gotta say, passed that test really well. When I set that thing to seven eighths of an inch, it was seven eighths of an inch. So you got your digital. I didn't show it, but I did check the rule and the sight glass for the manual read on the other side of the planer. Um, that was dead on to the Wixie digital readout. So I set the Wixie digital to inch and a half, went over to the sight glass, no adjustment needed. Uh, it was there. Um, and then you've got the feed check feature when you, when you put the, the, the stock into the machine that first half inch or so, it gives you an indication of exactly how much you'll be taking off. Um, so between the stop, the digital readout, the rule on the sight glass, and that pre-feed check, I love the depth of cut options uh, with this thing. Um, the dust collection is outstanding uh, as long as you open the blast gate before you, you, know, you run it. That's uh, uh, my moron move of the day. But uh, once we did that, once we got the dust collection hooked up properly, it was just, it, it blew it away. It was, you know, minimal, minimal overspill of chips. Uh, you know, barely any. Uh, very good. There is a fan assist in the exhaust for the planer, so it gives it a little preparatory push uh, into the chute, and uh, and then the dust collector can pick it up. So outstanding, uh, outstanding dust collection. One thing that really impressed me was the tolerance across that nine and a half inch board. It was almost immeasurable. It was one half of one thousandth, or one half of a human hair across nine and a half inches. That's pretty damn good. Uh, that's probably better than the tolerance on the digital meter <laughs> that I was using to measure it. You know, a half of a thousand. So that was uh, another, um, you know, big, big, big uh, benefit to me. So um, all in all. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Um, you know, I, I think that there's two planers in this class, and one is the DeWalt and one is the Oliver. Again, from my research, um, as I explained earlier, I can't use the DeWalt. I don't have the storage space for it. I need it to be portable. Um, if you have it, if you have a fixed location for a planer like a DeWalt and you, um, you know, can leave it someplace, uh, yeah, you put a Shelix head on that, and I think you've got, you know, as good a planer. You know, um, you're not going to get the digital readout, but you know, um, it's as good a planer. So those are my final thoughts. I uh, hope you found this somewhat informative, somewhat interesting. Uh, I left the I left the blunders in there. I don't cut that sort of stuff out. If I forget to open the blast gate, I forget to open the blast gate. You'll come along with me. I don't mind. Uh, seeing that if I forget to turn something on or set something up, I just I just film through it because that's that's kind of real real world. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, if you like this, please give a like, uh, give the old thumbs up, and if you're if you're subscribed already, thank you so much. Um, and if you're not subscribed, you know please give it a thought. Uh, go down there, 
uh, and, and subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you on the, the next video. And don't forget to sweep up and put away your tools. Take care.